San Diegans accomplish great things every day. We care about our neighbors and our community. We are proud of our diversity. We are resilient. We hold our leaders accountable. We live in one of the most dynamic cities in America. The San Diego Union Tribune, telling San Diego's story for more than 150 years. Welcome to the 2021 San Diego Union Tribune Festival of Books. I am so glad to be here, even virtually, and I'm glad that you're here as well. Let me tell you a little bit about myself. My name is Jamie Gold. I am a wellness design consultant, Mayo Clinic certified wellness coach, and the author of three books on design and remodeling. If the technology is cooperating today, you should be seeing the cover of that latest book on your screen. It is called Wellness by Design, a room-by-room -room guide to optimizing your home for health, fitness, and happiness. When we initially looked at the publishing date on this, we considered the two times that most people think about getting in shape. The first one, of course, is New Year's resolutions time. And the second is the start of swimsuit season, which is usually around Memorial Day. So that's what we were shooting for. And then, of course, we all got hit by a pandemic before that could happen. Let me share a bit of the journey to writing the book, my personal journey, as well as my professional journey, and the images from the book as well. Not all, of course, but some of them. So let's get started. This picture, of course, is not from the book. This is from 2009. I was a 233 pound couch potato at the time. It was taken at a major trade show. And if you've ever been to one of those, you spend a lot of time walking around on concrete floors and your feet can be killing you by the end of the day or before. Because I was packing on about an additional 100 pounds, I found that even just standing on my kitchen tile floors at times hurt. So with the stress of the extra weight and everything else going on in my life at the time, I realized that I had to do something where I would have a heart attack or a stroke. And I didn't want that to happen. So I started to swim laps again, which I had done earlier in my life and I enjoyed it. And my body started to crave healthier foods and I took off about 100 pounds, and that was great. You know the excitement of losing weight. Everyone tells you how good you look, and you get to buy new clothes, and you inspire yourself and other people, and it is exciting and fun. But then you have the challenge of maintaining that weight loss, and that could be a whole lot harder. In fact, so many people gain the weight back, and I really didn't want that to happen. So quite by accident, I discovered that I was up for some new physical challenges and I took up obstacle course racing. So my first one was a Spartan sprint. I had signed up for it seven months in advance, did a lot of preparation for it, working out with a coach and a team and learning what foods to eat and not eat and how far ahead and all those good things. And I realized that for myself, training and fueling for training and for events was a lot more motivating to me than dieting and exercising, especially endless dieting and exercising. So after that race, I signed up for other events. I did a few Ragnar trail relays and some more Spartans and a few go rock endurance events. And even, which I never thought I would do, I started training for a half marathon. So this picture is me at my first half marathon at the finish line. And I realized in getting there, and of course later training for a full marathon and um, Mount Whitney and a whole bunch of other exciting events, that my home was playing a supporting role in the process. 
that the things I was doing in my kitchen to get that set up and my bedroom to sleep better and my bathroom for recovery and my garage for getting out the door faster with better organization were all allies in this process of staying fit. Now, the links between your home and your health might not be obvious to everyone unless you're one of the many folks who either has an immunity issue or a breathing issue or maybe you use a wheelchair or a walker. Then you might be tuned into what we really call wellness design. Might be a term you're familiar with, might not. But since I literally wrote a book on it, let me share my definition of what wellness design is. I call it the practice of creating spaces that support the physical and emotional well-being of their occupants. Those could be indoor spaces or outdoor spaces. They could be public or private. And occupants could be people who live there, people who visit, people who work there, even pets. They're all occupants in uh, the spaces that we inhabit. So since this is such a huge topic, I mean, wellness design covers so many areas, I found it helpful to kind of create what I call an organizing principle. And that principle, which I included in the book, is called the five facets of wellness design. Those are health and fitness, safety and security, accessibility, functionality, and everyone's favorite comfort and joy. Let's look at what some of these include. It's not a comprehensive list, just kind of a short list. So the first one is probably what you think of most when you think of health and fitness. That's exercise equipment. A lot of people went out and they got Pelotons last year, or they got other brands, and they got treadmills. Another example of fitness, health and fitness facet would be blackout drapes that just help you sleep better, you know, block out that outside light, and anti-fatigue mats to cushion your joints when you're doing meal prep. Those would all be examples of health and fitness. There are many others and quite a few in the book. So let's go on to the second, safety and security. That would include details like kitchen and bath ventilation, air purifiers, smoke, carbon monoxide, and radon detectors. And again, there are many, many more, but these are just a few examples of the safety and security facet. The next one is accessibility. If you're not familiar with that term, it means creating a space or features that people can access, hence the word accessibility, regardless of their physical condition. So that can include features like these swing out uh, cabinet organizers. So you don't have to get down on your knees with a flashlight to see what's in the back of those blind corner cabinets. They can also be pull downs for wall cabinets, quite a few other accessories that just make a space easier to use. There's also grab bars for tubs and showers and barrier-free shower and home entries. If you think about it, it's hard to get into a home if there's steps and you use a wheelchair or a walker or even on crutches, but it's also hard to get in if you have a stroller or maybe one of those big roller bags. So barrier-free adds accessibility for everyone, and it adds visitability, makes your home easier for people you care about to come see you. The next facet is functionality. This one on the screen right now is something that I have in my own bathroom. It's a handheld massaging shower head. Now, the handheld part of it is what makes it functional because it not only makes it easier for you to clean yourself, but the tub and shower stall afterward. And a lot of people who create pet showers like them too, because it's easier to wash down the dog if you have one of these. Other examples of functionality facet uh, features, that doesn't roll off your tongue, would be voice control faucets or chef sinks. Those are the ones with all the great accessories that make meal prep and cleanup easier. So those are all examples of functionality facets. The last one is everyone's favorite, I think, comfort and joy. And those are the features that make a house a home. So some of the examples you're seeing in this space from the book are plants. Plants are great. They create a warm, welcoming feeling. Art. You're also seeing that homeowner's art on the walls. Could be the colors that you choose to include for paint or wall coverings, window coverings. Features that would contribute to comfort and joy would also be fireplaces or window seats or towel warmers. Again, these are features that people love having. They just make you enjoy your home more. So those are the five facets of wellness design. 
Now, when we look back at the start of the pandemic, if you ask people how they wanted to get healthy, they would probably say, well, I'm going to exercise more. I'm going to eat healthier. I'm going to get more sleep or reduce my stress. All of those still apply, of course, but I think before COVID, no one would have said, I'm going to read my kitchen or bathroom or bedroom. But we learned during this past year and a half how strong the ties are between our home and our health. Of course, I learned that getting healthy and losing and keeping off the weight. Maybe you learned it in other ways, but this is something that I think the vast majority of people who have been through this challenging time have also learned. Let's take a look back at the pandemic at what some of those lessons were and also what we could take away going forward and moving beyond this time. So back at the beginning, we had this mysterious toilet paper shortage. I still don't know why what we thought was a respiratory illness generated that, but anyone who had one of these bidet-style toilets or a bidet-style seat on a regular toilet was literally sitting pretty at that time. Now, the good news is those are going to be helpful to you ongoingly. For example, if you spend a lot of time in compression gear or in a bicycle or a horse saddle, you're going to really value the gentleness of the water stream as opposed to potentially rough paper and the warm air as opposed to the abrasion of that paper. So bidet features just make hygiene more comfortable. If there's someone in your home who has balance issues, not getting in and out of the tub every time you want to do intimate cleaning is also a benefit of a bidet style seat. After the great toilet paper shortage, we had the great wipes shortage and people were just going crazy, wiping down every surface of their home multiple times a day. Now, of course, if you had low maintenance surfaces, that made your life a whole lot easier. You had less stress doing it and it just became easier and less just less painful for you now low maintenance surfaces are great just going forward as well and if you're thinking about redoing your home look for things that don't need as much care look for things that don't show every fingerprint for example or pet nose print so there's just pages and pages of that information in the book after the great wife shortage, well, maybe around that same time, we had the package cleaning frenzy. Did we need to wipe off every piece of mail coming in the house? What about every package being delivered? What about family clothing just coming in? If you had one of these, what I call a landing zone near the entrance of your home, or maybe in a mud room just off the main entrance, you were in a great position to keep your home cleaner and more organized. I'm a big fan of the shoe off household. So when I come into my house, I take off my shoes near the door and I put on a pair of indoor footwear. And that means that I'm not tracking the outside in. So this is another way to just add wellness to your home. Now, after the package cleaning and the toilet paper and the wipes frenzy, we had, of course, the lockdowns. And that's a time when everyone's gyms closed, schools closed, offices closed. If we had family members in nursing homes or assisted living facilities, sometimes they were asking us to bring them home for their safety. So our homes suddenly had to multitask in ways that they weren't really designed to do. That's particularly true for anyone who was already working from home. And then suddenly a partner was doing the same. A lot of homes already had a home office. Many did not have two home offices. So we had to basically adapt and overcome. So the thing is, as gyms have reopened and schools are reopening and family members are back in uh, nursing homes and assisted living facilities being well cared for, a lot of our employers have decided they're going to keep people working from home. Why is that? A lot of people like not having the commute. And a lot of companies like cutting down on their office space. So if you are one of those folks who thought this was going to be temporary, and now you're finding out you're going to be doing this ongoingly, this question to ask yourself is how do you make your work from home space more wellness focused? 
Let's take a look at some of those options and some of the considerations. First, think about where that work from home space is. Maybe last year you just plunked it down in the dining room or the living room, or the only place you had was the corner of your bedroom. Well, that's not ideal, particularly in the work-life balance component of uh, reality. So look for how you can separate your workspace from your home space. Can you create a visual partition if they have to share a room? Maybe that's a drapery panel. Maybe it's a piece of furniture that would divide it. Maybe it's turning a small closet into a, a niche where you can shut the doors at the end. Or maybe it's a new piece of furniture that you can close up at the end of the day. I've seen all kinds of interesting options online. But think about creating that separation for yourself. The next factor you need to think about is your lighting. Now, in some spaces, you've got great natural light coming in from big picture windows, and you've got wonderful nature views as well, but maybe at certain parts of the day, you've got a lot of glare coming in. So you need to think about lighting and lighting control. Do you need new window coverings to address that glare? Can you reorient the equipment so you don't have your light shining in on the computer? If you're in a spare bedroom or your own bedroom, is the only light coming from behind you where it's not shining down on your work surface. That could be addressed with a task light. For example, the adjustable desk lamp that you see on that picture uh, on your screen right now. So those are all ways to address light control. Ergonomics is another crucial example, and that's basically a fancy medical term for your equipment, your furniture supporting your body properly. So if you're one of those folks who borrowed a dining room chair or a kitchen stool, or you took the folding chair that you had out in the garage and it's been pressed into service, not a great long-term solution. There's no adjustability, tend not to be ergonomic. You might be feeling you know, headaches, back aches, neck aches. You just want to, if you're going to be working from home long term, look for a chair that you can adjust to your body from the standpoint of your arms on the um, your arms on the arms of the chair, your back at the back of the chair being supported, having your your um, your hips supported, your legs supported. So all of that comes from choosing the right desk chair from you. And if you don't want to make that huge investment to something premium, you can look for a pre-owned model. But I would suggest if you can invest in something that gives you a return policy where you could try it out, see if it fits you, see if you can adjust it, that would be the way to go. And if you're going to be working there you know, ongoingly, it's, it's definitely a worthwhile investment. Other considerations for your work from home space would be the plants, which I mentioned before, a comfort and joy feature, but they're also health and fitness feature. Plants help purify your air. And you may not know this, but some computer equipment releases volatile organic compounds. Some do it just at the beginning, some do it for their lifespan, but having that air purification feature is, is a nice offset. Personalizing your office space so that you enjoy being in it. You could see I have art on the wall behind me. I have a um, red painted walls that I just find inspire my creativity. Maybe for you, that would be a soft blue or green that's calming. Pick the color that works for your preference that makes you glad to be in that space. And because we all spend so many hours at work, it's really good to think about ways to add movement into your work from home space. A couple ways to do that. One would be adding these desk risers that you see or something like that. So you can go from sitting to standing. And if you're standing, you could do leg raises. You can move from one foot to the other. You can do what I do and turn up the sound speakers on your computer and dance around your office for a few minutes. Or you could do burpees, whatever works for you. But as one of the contributors to Wellness by Design put it, sitting is the new smoking. So you don't want to be doing the equivalent of two or three packs a day. So get up, take as many phone calls as you can, uh, walking back and forth. Give yourself ways to move around. And that doesn't have to be a treadmill desk or a bicycle desk. It could be elliptical, a mini elliptical under your desk. 
but look for ways to, again, increase that movement. In my Wellness by Design book, there are more than 200 pages of pictures and inspiration and ideas. And I know that not everyone owns their home. Some people are in a temporary or long-term rental situation. So I wanted to include tips that someone renting a home could use to enhance their wellness as well. There's also in the book a direction to a place on my website where I have information with resources and checklists that I can update. I don't know when a second uh, update of the book will come out and be available in stores, but I can update on my website all the time. So if you go to jamiegold.net, you're going to see a few different things there. One is you're going to see two excerpts from the book. Another is you're going to get word on any giveaways that are coming up. I've already given away one of those handheld massaging shower heads. I gave away an anti-fatigue mat. I'm sure there will be others coming up as well. So if you check in at jamiegold.net, you can find those. You can also subscribe to my wellness design blog called Gold Notes. And I've been publishing that since 2008. And it includes links to articles that I've written for Blue Zones and Design Milk and Forbes.com, and also, of course, the San Diego Union Tribune. You can also find information on my Wellness Wednesdays. And those are essentially interactive podcasts that I do on Clubhouse. So rather than just listening to folks speak, as you've been doing for the last 20 plus minutes, you can ask questions. You could share your own concerns and ideas. So you'll find links there to the upcoming uh, clubhouse sessions as well. Now, right now, through Labor Day, Labor Day 2021, I should say, I have a free download. You can find it from my homepage or from the blog, and it is free summer tips for using your home to get healthy. And so these are easy, affordable ways. So they're not requiring you to do a full remodel, just simple things that you could do to help you reach your fitness goals this summer whether that's doing your first 5K or doing your next half marathon at the fastest pace. So that will be available again until Labor Day of uh, 2021. Now, I am hoping that we can all get together in person next year. Festival of Books is one of my absolute favorite events in San Diego. So Luckily, hopefully, we will all be there. We'll all get to gather. We'll get to share ideas. But in the meantime, you can find Wellness by Design at the link that I'm going to share for you right now. And there it is. That's our independent booksellers where you can find a copy of Wellness by Design. Again, my name is Jamie Gold. And I thank you for being here. Look forward to saying hi in person next year. And please stay well.